five with lower limb prosthetics for children. My name is Jose Gomez. This is Christo Guerrero and Daniel Castellanos. Uh, as Team Four mentioned, we worked with them in designing the prosthetic. They worked on the upper limb prosthetic while we worked on the lower limb. Our main policy statement is that children outgrow their prosthetics on average on a yearly basis. With an average cost of five to fifteen thousand dollars per prosthetic, that is a lot of money, time, and effort for a family who's going through enough as it is. Uh, we resolved to design an affordable, adjustable, and attainable prosthetic. We focus on the age group between five and sixteen years of age. Global elements were considered in the design of this prosthetic. We used common components like hollow shafts and springs to maximize attainability all over the world. Our main goals were to design and manufacture an above knee prosthetic that is adjustable. We wanted to manufacture using off the shelf parts and 3D printed parts to keep the cost down. Future, future goals include testing in real world situations. Our research indicated that 75% of prosthetics uh, are lower extremity prosthetics. With the negative emotional and negative self-esteem issues that are related with this, it's very difficult for the child. The child, uh, the child, every time he gets a new prosthetic, it takes three to six months just to adjust to that prosthetic. And then six months later, it gets switched out and the whole process begins again. This is a list of real world situations tested by the AAOP. They test the prosthetics with level walking, stopping abruptly, sidestepping abruptly, stepping onto an obstacle, and tripping the prosthetic user. The FDA classifies um, prosthetics as a class one device, which they associate with low to moderate risk. All records must be kept and bodily injuries must be reported. There's also registration and medical device listings that are important. After researching leg lengths, we decided to break up our prosthetic into two different groups. One would be from 5 to 11 years, and the other would be from 11 to 16 years of age. As shown here, the leg lengths for a 5-year-old is 50 centimeters, which is equivalent to 20 inches, with the 11-year-old having an average leg length of 28 inches, and the 16-year-old an average leg length of 35 inches. As it shows here, the line begins to level out at the leg length after 16 years of age. Therefore, there's a good chance a prosthetic could be used well into adulthood. So for our alternative designs, we wanted to make um, parts that were interchangeable or that can be adjusted on the prosthetic. So for our alternate shaft designs, we wanted to do a two-part system. So we had, um, for our first design, the pin-based system as we displayed. And then we have a threaded leg system similar to um, a threaded bolt and then a clamp-like system that would um, clamp the two um, shafts together. For the foot design, we did something similar as well as a pin design, a threaded design, and a slider notch design similar to the shaft of a scooter that slides. And for the socket, we wanted to do a cup-like design um, made out of a bendable but hard plastic. For the knee, we wanted to do um, molecular uh, springs, either one, two, or a three um, spring system. And the springs would be able to be interchangeable um, depending on um, the, the age of the child. For the prototype, we picked, um, we picked the pin-based system for the foot, the pin-based system for the shaft, and the two um, spring system for the knee, and the cup-like designs with wings so that it can be easily adjusted. For the structural design, we um, chose aluminum for the shaft and for the foot, and we 3D printed the socket and the knee, but theoretically the socket would be made out of um, plastic while the knee would be made out of, a, of aluminum. For the simulations, we did various um, pressure simulations, um, spring um, cycling, and force um, on different materials so we can optimize the best um, material for the prosthetic. For the socket, we chose the cup like designs with wings and made out of hard, hard density polyethylene um, with the wings so that it can be adjusted and tightened with the strap. For the socket analysis, we did outwards pressure and we did a 200 pound force. So as you can see, the force is um, 
the maximum force is at the bottom of the ring, where you can see the maximum stress is about 2,800 pounds, so it does not exceed um, the maximum yield stress. We also did a displacement analysis to see how much the socket um, extends, and it extends about a maximum of 0.5 in radius. For the knee, we chose the two, um, the two prints, the two spring system, and they're interchangeable so that the child, as a child grows, these springs can be stronger, um, excuse me, they can be stronger. And the material that we chose for the springs is steel, while well, the knees would be made out of um, aluminum, but the prototype is PLA plastic. For the knee, the most important um, analysis was the torque analysis to reduce buckling, so as the angle increased, the torque increased, so reducing the chance of the buckling. For the shaft design, we did a two-part system. So the bottom holes are in one-inch interval, intervals, while the top holes, to try to maximize um, adjustability, we did it in quarter-inch inter intervals, but uh, to keep the design simplistic and easy to manufacture. Um, for the future, we did want to um, do a screw system so that we can maximize um, attainability and have infinite adjustability. We did uh, the 200 pound force on the aluminum and we did an aircraft aluminum. So the maximum stress was fairly low compared to the yield stress. For the foot design, we did a four part system, um, including the ankle. So right here you see the three parts. You have the heel, the extended, um, fan archer and the arch. Um, the most critical part of um, the foot was the, the heel um, part right here, which actually um, failed and gave us a factor of safety less than one the first time we did it without the springs. And then um, without changing our design, we wanted to, um, we inserted springs to see if to see if we can save the design. And we actually ended up getting a factor of safety about four and keeping our stress low. For the cost analysis, we cut the cost at about $1,000 by using low cost materials, a simplistic design, and so that it's easy to manufacture to also reduce um, cost. As you can see here, the aluminum and the bolt and any of the pieces that we had to put together, it was fairly affordable compared to the labor of the 3D printing and in-house manufacturing. Um, we actually saved um, a lot of money by doing in-house manufacturing compared to outhouse, which would have been at least a, um, about a grant to manufacture. Um, for the actual prosthetic, um, manufacturing is also still high. So if we can figure out how to cut down manufacturing time, we could reduce our price. Um, the socket price for the material is fairly expensive because we have to do an initial cost of um, the bolt, because we would re, um, me, we would mold the the socket that way. It would be easier to manufacture. So we use various different uh, techniques and methods for the construction of the prototype. As um, we used uh, various di different uh, drilling uh, techniques, so metal bending, sanding, 3D printing was one of our main objectives to use to keep the cost low. We also used some epoxies for veneer and to keep it uh, uh, stain free and uh, also we also painted the prosthetic to uh, address the negative self-esteem issues into an aesthetically pleasing uh, color for children as you can see here. Uh, there's various, as you can see from the pictures, there are very different uh, steps within the construction. Um, at the top we have the shaft and die area, the foot being drilled out, the completed foot and the socket being printed out and completed. For the experimentation, um, unfortunately we couldn't be able to uh, test on a patient or on children, so instead we used uh, mechanics of materials uh, analysis for the, the prototype, which included knee buckling, uh, the testing the knee angle, and weight bearings of the shaft, foot, knee, and socket. As we can see from uh, the pictures, we tested uh, the weight bearing of the foot and the shaft at the lowest setting and the, the highest setting. Tested, we strapped the uh, knee part to see if it would be able to bend at a sitting position. And the torque and uh, analysis for the knee to see if it would hold up to 
any legal thing so that when the patient takes a stride, they won't just buckle under the force of the stride. Some of the design experience uh, that we uh, achieved throughout the uh, building process of the prototype, including uh, real world experience, networking with several different uh, people that helped us out throughout the, throughout the project, including a sheet metal bending place. Um, some of the standards used included, we uh, included in the design, which uh, the FDA regulations for the prototype, the economics and environmental aspects of the design. Almost all of these parts are uh, recyclable, so they can, if something should happen, it breaks, they can be recycled later on. Global awareness, we're well, raising awareness of the uh, children that need lower limb prosthetics, as they are one of the most neglected uh, population. Uh, for low, uh, prosthetics, as they since they do age uh, considerably from uh, from childhood to adulthood, and they grow, they are sometimes uh, uh, forget forgotten about. Uh, some of the time management, we needed to keep our time management within our schedule. Uh, we had eight, eight months and to create the project from design to completion. Some of the contemporary issues that we uh, came across included. Uh, the foot design, uh, we couldn't. We tried to bend it ourselves uh, using the techniques and uh, uh, equipment available to us in the machine shop. Unfortunately, as you can see, it didn't come out as perfectly as we wanted. So we had to outsource the, uh, the to outsource the foot to be able to bend it the way we wanted to. Um, initially, the, one of the shafts we tried to have it uh, as close as possible using the specifications available for the products. We tried to sand it down, um, and, 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 and finally we couldn't use it. Uh, when we sanded it down, it still wouldn't fit. It uh, welded it shut, so we couldn't extend it. So we found a different size diameter shaft to insert the, the inner shaft. Um, as well as uh, one of the socket wings uh, during testing uh, cracked. Um, since it is 3D printed, the layers um, are very uh, brittle, and one of the wings cracked. Some of the design elements integrated globally for this design, as we stated previously, um, included the standards used, keeping in mind the FDA regulations and some of the engineering standards, such as material, material properties and um, the common material availability, uh, such as the bolts and nuts. The economic aspects, trying to keep it affordable as possible within uh, the budget of some family members, keep it as low as cost as possible, and raising awareness for lower than prosthetics for children, as I stated previously, they are one of the most neglected uh, and forgotten about uh, populations for prosthetics. Some of the recommendations we have for this prosthetics include using a sleeve uh, for the prosthetics before inserting it and using it uh, to keep comfort high and to uh, prevent injury. Uh, inspect and cleanse the uh, socket daily uh, before and after use and to consult your physician before adjustments uh, to prevent any injuries or harm. Some of the uh, future work regarding this project, prosthetics have a limited scope in the future. Um, they can be, there's various different construction materials that can be implemented for prosthetics. There's better cost effective ways such as the socket. Unfortunately, the cost was so exorbitant um, to make a mold, an injectable mold, even a, a temporary mold. So we used 3D printing throughout our project to keep the cost effectiveness of the prosthetics. In the future, we would like a finer adjustability. There's various points within the, so the prototype that we can implement a finer adjustability, such as at the end, we can use a, a similar threaded system instead of throughout. We can have a small threaded uh, implementation of the ankle, uh, and side pieces as well. Then including, we wanted uh, also in the future to reduce the weight of the prosthetics. You, right now it's at uh, 4.5 pounds, which is manageable, and also uh, assisted gate electronics for cool factor. In conclusion, the cost of the prototype was uh, around $13 million. Uh, the prosthetic was, the lower limb prosthetics was created um, it accommodates uh, children from 5 to 6, we mainly focused on 
uh, Jose stated, between 11 and 16. Um, and this, uh, as you saw in one of the slides, was from 28 to 35 inches of adjustability. Uh, the adjustability is implemented in three, in three ways. We got the foot, we got the shaft, and we got the side piece, and as well as the socket wing. We would like to extend our thanks to uh, some of the people that have helped us out throughout this project, including our advisor, Tosanoglu, Sicarelli uh, for helping us throughout uh, the construction of the prosthetics, and uh, Boner, the sheet metal bending uh, company, for allowing us to uh, take some time out of their busy schedule to create the fourth piece. piece. Uh, we uh, uh, divided the responsibility equally throughout the project and design aspects of the prototype, and each of us consulted with each other regarding how to design and implement the prototype design. And we mostly cut to the, the, the timeline, uh, as you can see in the board. And now we leave it off to, thank you so much for your time, and we leave it off to comments and questions. Any questions about the cup? You did a simulation on the cup. Yes. And it showed that it, was, it wasn't going to fail, from right. the way I read that. The, the analysis was what we wanted to do, HDP, high density polyethylene. Um, we couldn't, we tried to, we looked for the material cost and to have it molded at least, uh, but the price was very, very high. So we used the 3D printing and this is a PLA substance. So it just not, wasn't strong enough. Right. Yeah, exactly. If you'd simulated that, it would have shown it cracked maybe? Yeah. It could have cracked. As, again, the SolidWorks, is, since it's 3D, it's 3D printed, it prints in layers. So it, uh, it wouldn't account for it possibly. I actually um, simulated using ABS um, because SolidWorks doesn't have um, PLA on there. And it actually showed that it shouldn't um, break, but um, since it's 3D printed in layers, we try to use the minimum size layers so we can see if we can um, um, actually test it. But it actually ended up cracking and eventually breaking, and we had to um, go back the other. Well, it's good to have a failure. Yeah. <laughs> of course, you learn from that. When, when somebody puts that on, how do you, the wings, do you put a clamp around the um, wings to yeah. tighten there's, it up? Yeah, there's like um, a band that we put around it, With like Velcro. Ideally, a Velcro strap around it so it can hold its shape and hold on to the band. So was that in your simulation, the Velcro strap? No, it wasn't. Because that puts that that point where you're breaking it in tension. Well, that's Correct. why the pressure, when you tighten the top of the band, it will take have pressure force out, which is why we added 30 pounds of pressure to the, to the um, simulation. Okay. My, my question is around rotation and off-axis loading. Uh, how would you handle that with this design? I know, but your, your, your foot. Rotation would be basically okay. once you strap it to the prosthetic, once you strap it, strap it to the uh, residual limb, they would turn your thigh, because that's usually how they you would turn your it. thigh. And yeah. since it's straight, that's usually when you take a stride, you just take it straight. So they would have to, since sometimes the prosthetics are always looked at, they don't usually have a rotational, they usually use the residual limb to turn and take a step. For our future work, we were um, going to work on um, the ankle, but since we had so many components to focus on, we didn't um, focus on rotation too much on, um, on the ankles. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. On your cup there, it seems like, like the, the, the column of the legs of the cup. You know, they're wide up top and yeah. very thin. Exactly, because usually um, the way the visual limbs are, they usually, um, depending on the way they get um, amputated, mm -hmm. they're usually in some type of a cone shape. So that's the way we made um, our okay. socket. So that when they put the limb in, it's um, in that shape. Okay. Yeah. Have you thought about the, the thinnest part of it where, yeah. where, where it meets? Have you thought of making that a little wider, give you more strength? Yeah, yeah we did. After, um, um, after it broke, I actually went back and ended up making the layer actually up to here and uh, for, for the future to see if it wouldn't uh, break as much. Okay. Have you thought of giving other materials besides uh, the 
a plastic or maybe? Yeah, I've actually uh, been researching because, you know, after you do your project, you still have some time, somehow go into Google and look things up. And a lot of people are actually using some type of carbon fiber. Um, yeah, <laughs> it actually when I when I first started researching, um, not a lot of people were using carbon fiber. Um, there's actually this one company in California that's actually using carbon fiber for their foot. So that's something that we're, we're actually looking into for the foot and for the socket. And these are three. This is three D printed. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I would recommend if you do the top the, the cup, uh, say you don't carbon fiber, then you can say you can yeah. do it yourself. Exactly. So, so we can produce weight all around. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else? Thank you very much. Team number six. This is the ALBA team, autonomous load bearing assistant robot. <laughs>